They say it's Gaddafi's money and Gaddafi's bank accounts they are freezing. They use this language so it sounds like it's Gaddafi's money so the Western powers don't come off as thieves pillaging the coffers of a sovereign nation. Well, some $30 billion is what we're talking about. The Treasury Department in early March froze the personal accounts of Omar Gaddafi. Resolution 1970 calls for the freezing of Libyan money overseas and travel bans for Gaddafi. The international pressure continues to mount on Muammar Gaddafi. The European Union has frozen his assets. Gaddafi assets, Gaddafi personal accounts, Gaddafi billions. The media makes it sound like the money they froze belongs to Gaddafi. They make it seem like Gaddafi is a thief who has stolen billions from the Libyans. The West comes off as a superhero seeking justice for the Libyans. Let's go through all the assets that were frozen. Tell me if you really think this is Gaddafi's money or simply another case of financial terrorism. First on the list, oil companies. Now remember that there is a wealth distribution program in Libya. This means that revenue from oil are deposited into the accounts of every Libyan. So that's about $500 a month that every Libyan will have to do without. Next is the Gaddafi International Charity and Development Foundation, which doesn't even belong to Muammar Gaddafi, but to his son Saif al-Islam. This NGO is very active in the human rights field. Muammar Gaddafi's daughter, Aisha, has a similar organization called Watasima. Watasima's funds have also been frozen. Another frozen asset belongs to the Economic and Social Development Fund Company. This fund was created to help out low-income families. So now, the UN has frozen money meant for the poor. Another important frozen asset belongs to Libya's Housing and Infrastructure Board. The Libyan government has launched one of the largest public infrastructure investments in the world. The investment is there to improve houses, roads, utilities, bridges and buildings. And taking into account all the bombs dropped by NATO, this investment is desperately needed. The Libyan Broadcasting Company is another victim of financial terrorism. Assets could only be frozen for one purpose to prevent them from reporting their side of the story. So there goes freedom of press. It gets worse. The company was bombed by NATO because they kept broadcasting despite their assets being frozen. Three workers were killed in the bombings. Libya has also put billions into sovereign wealth funds including one specifically for investments in Africa. This company, the Libyan Arab African Investment Company, also had its assets frozen. I'm going to give you an idea of all the massive projects this company was involved in so you can see how much Africa is suffering from these sanctions. Gaddafi in 2010 said he was offering to invest 97 billion dollars in the continent to free it from Western influence on condition that African states rid themselves of corruption and nepotism. One of the projects is Lap Green Networks, a mobile phone operator which has commercial operations in Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Uganda, Rwanda, and is planning to launch operations soon in Chad, Sierra Leone, Togo, and Southern Sudan. Lap is also the main shareholder in Afrikia Airways. Its name is the Arabic for Africa, and it says its mission is to link Africa states to each other. It operates routes that are poorly served by major airlines. Libya is also the main contributor to the African Union's 53 country body. Tripoli is also contributing 100 million euros for the construction of a Trans-Sahara Highway in the north of Niger. During discussions of debt relief, the Libyan Central Bank announced Libya would provide $50 million in grants to build a hospital and a university in Mauritania. To improve logistics in Africa, a feasibility study is underway for Libya to build a highway north of capital Brazzaville, where a mosque is also planned. 
Libya has also built the Dream Park Entertainment Center in Gambia. The Dream Park Entertainment Center is a theme park that is designed to be accessible to all families regardless of financial income. I don't know if you're aware, but education in Libya is free, and that includes university. So the next time you hear that Gaddafi's assets have been frozen in England or America, think of the international Libyan students there who depend on that money for their tuition, rent, health care, and living expenses. The conflict in Libya is having very serious consequences for Libyan students at RIT. They rely on Libya to pay their tuition and living expenses. About 2,000 students in the U.S., including several at RIT, will lose funding at the end of the month. This after Libya lost access to $30 billion in assets frozen by the United Nations. It's difficult for them because their main source of funding is the, the Libyan government. It's difficult for students like Ahmed, who has a wife and child, who rely on him to make ends meet. He would only reveal his first name and wanted to keep his face hidden for safety concerns. Ahmed and his family get about $2,000 a month for rent, health insurance, and other expenses from Libya. Without that money... I will just stay one more month and go back home. That's, that's the, the plan. Other Libyan students have sold cars and other possessions. Aside from banks and the personal accounts of individuals, NATO's claims are part of the Gaddafi regime. That's it. All we've seen are assets that were meant to help out Libyans or Africans. Where is Gaddafi's money? Ask Libyans and they will tell you that they admire Gaddafi because he can be trusted. He is no thief. That's why he's so dangerous, because the West cannot corrupt him. Take a look at what the BBC cut from their famous interview. Why didn't they air this part? Could they be ashamed of the truth? I challenge Cameron and everybody else if he can bring one dinar that belongs to me in any foreign bank. I challenge this Cameron. Let him show his evidence. Please, I want, uh, please, it is shame upon him being a prime minister of such a, such a state to say such things. Would you stop doing Britain? Would you stop doing business with Britain then? The Libyan state will take the decision. I challenge him that he shows me my bank account in Britain and if I have any deposits there. I have a tent. I don't like money. Like I don't. I'm not like them adoring money. I, I don't need money. I challenge them. And I put my two fingers in their eyes. If I have any, any accounts, whether it is inside or outside Libya. <laughs> So not only is this financial terrorism, but the Western powers want to give a portion of these frozen assets over to the Libyan rebels. For example, France wants to give $259 billion over to the rebels. So what is this money going to buy? Guns and bombs. So basically, you are stealing Libyan money and you are going to kill them with it. So are the Libyans going to get their money back? As for Libya's financial interests, analysts say you could look to the history of countries such as Iran. Their assets were frozen in the wake of the 1979 hostage crisis. Their money that was seized from Iran back in 1979 has still, you know, not been returned uh, to the Iranians. So it's basically time for a plunder play. You know, if we can take it away from them, we will. Gaddafi can likely kiss the money goodbye. We took their nuclear capacity away, made promises, didn't live up to them, a claim that was a great victory for peace. And now we're in a situation where it's clear that oil is at stake.